Testing my broadcast, testing, testing. I could be live now, but who knows? So I'll wait until this whole thing kind of goes. Uh, I've got my chat up. All right, let's just, you know, assume that I'm live. <laughs> Hi, everybody. It's the Zen Witch here. And I thought I'd do a little live stream today to show you another side of myself. Being a witch, um, as is typical of a lot of witches, I make a lot of stuff. I make... Um, things so that I can have more natural versions of products that I use all the time. I make, um, I sew, I'm crafty, I just like doing things with my hands. Witches are transformers, you know, we take one thing, we turn it into other things. We transform energy, we can transform materials as well. So it doesn't surprise me that a lot of witches are crafty people too. Um, oh, and I realize here, I don't have my microphone next to me good god here we go happy mercury retro a live stream <laughs> so i hope you could hear that you know the blather that i was putting out before um and we'll just see when people start to show up live streams are so weird and i i have yet to figure out how to um announce a live stream ahead of time to say, hey, I'm going to be live on this date and time. But here, here's one of the things I'm considering. Um, strongly thinking about doing a live streamed sales event uh, because, as I've told you many times, I have disability. And so, and being 61 years old, I just don't have the energy, um, especially not with my adrenal condition and with fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue and all that fun stuff. Um, I don't have the ability to go out and do craft shows and do festivals in the summer where you got to go and, you know, early in the morning, set up a booth, drag your product with you. But, you know, I can't do the making of things and that <laughs> and survive, you know. Um, and I've been in a, I'm, I've had a week of pain. Um, President's Day weekend, we had our Hogwarts program that I am headmaster of. And this is my second to the last session um, as headmaster. I'm retiring from it after 16 years of being involved with the program, just six years of being headmaster, um, because it kicks my ass. I mean, mostly because I don't have kids, children in the program anymore. And um, <clears throat> I'm in my crone hood and I got other things to do. And being a real witch, I'm here to minister to the people, um, the adults that are witches and need a priestess to talk to or, you know, consult with or do ritual with or whatever. And as much as it's been so lovely teaching real magic to kids, it kind of, you know, there's kind of a little, just a little stick that my valid place is in the context of Harry Potter teaching children. I would really love to be back into being validated by adults in the real world. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, I thought I'd get on here today and show you the stuff that I make because I make a lot of stuff. And it can kind of give you a preview of what a live stream event would look like. And you can let me know if these are things you might be interested in. So, okay, let's start with a little smoke glance. Oh. To you out there. I am going to put that out because... I get this, I get um, my sage from Mountain Rose Herbs. So, uh, um, you know what? I'm going to take a piece of paper and I'm going to write down um, the places that I'm mentioning so that I can put links below uh, so that you can know what are good sources for things or at least the sources that I think are good. Uh, Mountain Rose Herbs is an excellent source of good organic, very... Um, well cultivated and ethically harvested and they're just an excellent company and that's where I get most of my herbs from um, if I'm buying in huge bulk if not well, I've got my local co-op that I go to and and get herbs there as well 
But um, I get my sage from Mountain Rose and I'll buy like a pound of sage and it lasts me, you know, more than a year. But it's it's really good and it's really well dried. And like if I use a sprig of it that's got a bunch of leaves and I light it, um, it's uh, it's very difficult to put out. It's really well dried and so it burns easily and then I end up choking myself. So, um, so anyway, there's a little bit of a smudge. So let's see where to start here. I'm going to minimize my cell. So here's a, um, a thing that you might have seen on videos that I did around Christmas. And yes, you're going to see my overhead cam there. Now you can see my ceiling. <laughs> Hopefully without a stink bug crawling across it. Stink bugs! Okay. So what these are are sigils. Um, a sigil is a symbol of, uh, you know, con of energies. I'm trying to put these someplace where there's not something reflected in them. Okay. Um, a sigil is a symbol and y you can make a sigil by, um, the, the way that I first learned was you take like, uh, let's say you're working on a spell to, um, on health. Okay increased health or good health. So you could use that, um, maybe optimal health. You could use that phrase optimal health and you'd write it down and then you'd, uh, do something like, um, here, let's do this. And then you would take all the letters, um, only once. So And there's already an A, and then there's an L. So O-P-T-I-M-A-L-H-E are the letters in optimal health that, you know, we, we don't count the repeats. You just do each letter that occurs once. And then you can um, take those letters, and I mean, this is kind of a long one. I didn't realize it when I was writing it out. But you can take those letters and make them into a symbol, for instance, like if there's an L and an E, let's look at the word love. That's nice and short. Okay, L-O-V-E. Well, if you take the L and the E, you know, you write out the E, there's our, there's an L in that E. And then you could, um, you know, work a V in there somewhere, work an O in there, somewhere that just makes like a symbol rather than recognizable word. Um, that's pretty slapdash, but you get the idea. So you can do that and you can do it with a long phrase or you can even do it with your name. Like if you um, have adopted a magical name, um, you can make that magical name into a symbol, which is then a personal sigil. And you can make sigils for those phrases that I was talking about. And so um, something, you know, when you're doing your spell work, maybe you can draw that sigil on your candle if you're doing candle magic or if you're making a talisman or you're making an amulet. Um, you can use those symbols on there. So that's the the original way I learned of doing sigils. Um, you can also use other symbols, you know, planetary symbols, symbols that mean something to you, like a heart, like a lightning bolt, like, you know, whatever, and put them together to make a symbol of something that has meaning for you. Um, these, what these are, are symbols of the um, demons, okay, as they are called from Solomon's Key. So the 72 um, Solomon Spirits, hold on, I'm going to go get this book because I want to show you. And uh, okay, here we go. I haven't reviewed this deck yet. I think I haven't reviewed this deck yet. And let me get my deck menu too. Yes, I have a deck menu. I have a menu of all the tarot and all the oracle decks and then the non-card oracles. And, and that way I can keep track of what I've done and what I haven't done. So um, the Solomon's key, where in the hell is that on here? 72. Yes, 72 Spirits of Solomon is what it's called. Um, out of print, long, long out of print. So good luck finding it for less than like 400 bucks. But I, I've had it since it came out. And this person has taken um, 
the Ars Goetia, which is an old, you know, ceremonial magic document and, and taken the demons out of that deck, the 72 of them are out of that document and shows the sigils for them, what the vibe is for that. The book even has little rituals and stuff. I'm, I won't go on with that because I will review this deck at some point. Um, but I went to the cards of this deck that look like this. And I um, made these sigils onto little mirrors. And they can be used however you want to use them. You know, you could take a sigil, put it on your altar, set something on it that you want to charge with that energy. Um, you could put a candle in front of it. And as the light goes into the mirror and is then spread out, that whatever the light touches... That's where the energy goes. Um, you could put a glass of water on top of it to absorb the energy and drink that water. Uh, you could charge crystals with it. You could just, you know, you could make um, make a, something different that's a talisman or something that you can wear, but I'm talking about, you know, just the mirrored version here. So I want to show you um, these, and these are free-handed. I started when I had this idea and I started doing this, and these are paint pens, these have not been baked. My first baking experience, I ruined a whole batch because I listened to the wrong person um, online, of course. But um, so these are all freehanded. And when I first started doing them, I thought, well, I'm going to take a Sharpie and I will, you know, draw out the pattern first because they're pretty complex, as you can see. Then I figured out because I'm drawing this on a mirror, um, you can actually see the Sharpie underneath because the Sharpie is reflected in the mirror. I'm trying to get it to, to give you a... This is very interesting. <laughs> okay, you can almost see it there. I'm waiting for it to pop into focus, and I guess it's not going to. But you can kind of see two lines because you're seeing the lines on the glass, and then you're seeing it reflected in the mirror underneath. And even if I used a Sharpie that was sort of like the same color of the paint pen I was going to use, it was still a different color, and it was just a mess. So I thought, okay, I'm going to dive in. And the only thing that I I kind of trace, I have a, a little contact paper circle that I center, and then I will just do little dots with the paint pen so I get a you know, a circle that looks like a circle. But that's the only thing that I do with the pattern. The rest of it, the letters and the pattern itself, I just go into, you know, trance state. Because, okay, when you're copying a pattern like this and it's not letters, it's not language, and uh, doing it freehand makes you look at, like, all the relationships and the spaces and the positive spaces and the negative spaces and the relationships of the lines, which puts you solidly into right brain. And right brain mode, as you know, is trance state and meditative state. So I'm doing these in a highly focused way. I'm thinking about what this particular entity stands for while I'm drawing this, and that energy goes in there. These have not been, um, that I did like a, a blanket charge on them, but these are kind of ready for you to take and charge with your own energies and, and establish your own bond with. Um, but I'll tell you what these are. This one is Vapula, and Vapula is expertise. Now, those of you who who study these demons from the source um, might have some very different ideas or if you look on you know the internet what people say but oh my god there's a fucking stink bug on the ceiling look look do you see that that in the middle of the heart okay i love i love you stink bug now i can't now i can't center it shit there we go wait 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 oh my god stink bug Jesus H. Okay, so <laughs> stink bug on the ceiling. What do you do? So anyway, um, <laughs> these are these uh, entities taken from this book and the way this author has put meaning to them. So uh, remember what I always say, a good witch can make anything work. Well, make it work. You know, it all depends on what you generate in your head. I don't look at these as, you know, everything, gods and goddesses, as, as there's this... Um, self-existent external entity you know these things that I'm doing in my mind I am co-creating with the universe so that that gives you you know 
a great deal of power with something and how you look at it. You're the one that's generating the energy around it. So, um, so here's Vapula, which um, has the energy of expertise. And then we have, um, I have a, a file of these, but what I did at, at Yule was I took these and I printed out um, the little rituals that go with them in the book and I rolled the appropriate color candle up with it and then people just picked a scroll and that, you know, so we, we opened it up to the magic and everybody focused and then you pick a scroll and that's energy that you're inviting into your life. So um, a lot of the ones that I did are now distributed and gone to my family. This is Phoenix. Phoenix stands for harmony. And a lot of the ones in this deck have really negative connotations. Um, let's see if I can find some. Let's see, rec recognition, restraint, wisdom, intuition, divination, pleasure, change, memory, antiquity, immobility, destruction, loss, failure. You know, there's all these kind of um, negative connotations. And, and truthfully, I mean, this is meant as a divination deck. So those have valid places. All those things occur in life. But as far as a sigil, what would you do with that? Maybe, you know, if you're dealing with that energy of loss or immobility, it would be a good thing to connect with the energy of that entity so that you can better converse with it and transform it into something else. So there's Phoenix. And the colors that I used are the colors of um, the candles as they're laid out in the book. You know, here are the colors they give me. And if it said like pink or blue, well, I used pink and blue. Booer is uh, healing. And the paint pens were, you know, it was kind of disappointing in the beginning because they were a little streaky on the glass. But then I thought, you know, what the hell? This is a, an individually created thing and I'm using my skills and I'm focusing and, you know, fuck perfection, right? <laughs> we say a thing at Hogwarts um, that is actually a card in the Morgan's Tarot. Um, and that's that it it may not be a perfect circle, but it is a perfect whatever it is. So perfection is inherent in everything. It's just these external ideas of perfection that take us away from that and bring in lots of judgment. Okay. Now we have um, Foras, F-O-R-A-S. Foras is longevity. So somebody that's maybe there's a project you're starting that you really would like to last a long, long time, um, a relationship, something like that, even your own life you could use that for. Balliol is uh, mastery. Very interesting pattern. And it was absolutely fascinating to do these freehand. You know, I just had to sit and look at where things started in relation to other lines. And, you know, just... It was fascinating and really, really good for my brain. I gotta say that. Okay, this is Belleth. And Belleth carries the energy of passion. So that one's pretty loopy and crazy, huh? I'm trying to see if I can get him to pop in more. Yeah, Belleth. Vasago is protection. And you can kind of see it in the symbol. If you look at that, okay, that's me. And then all these things around it, you know, this boundary around it that kind of indicates protection. And this is my favorite. This, I love, love, love this pattern. I just love the way it looks. I vibe with it. Um, Asmodee is skill. So I definitely called on Asmodee when I was making these. Um, I have done henna body art uh a bunch in years past and I stopped doing it because of the issues that I have with my neck and the arthritis in my hands and stuff but those skills um, are still with me and they definitely stood me in good stead with this project I'll take the hair off of that that makes it look a little better <laughs> and then uh, Marcosius the last one I have here where are you Marcosius Marcosius is strength Now, as far as like selling these, I have no idea what I would charge for them. No idea. So you can, 
you know, weigh in on that? What would you pay for something like that? Knowing that, you know, the materials themselves are, not, you know, not a lot of money there, um, but the skill. And not just the drawing skill, but I also bring the skill of focus and, you know, the skills of a witch to doing that. So, and I always think when I'm making things, I'm always thinking about the receiver. I'm thinking about somebody receiving something that I've made with my hands and it bringing them joy. <gasps> Look at this. I'm joyful. Um, so now I want to show you some of the other things that I make. This is a tester. Um, I make a couple of different salves. And when I first started using this salve, um, a someone I knew made it and called it Boo Boo Goo. And that's a name that I guess is kind of a folk name that follows this salve around. And I used to buy it from her. And then I thought, well, you know, I'm going to make it on my own and um, took my foray into salve making. I've always, you know, herbalism is one of my little side interests that I've been looking at since the 1980s, really. Um, but this one is called Plain Plantain. And I get my plantain fresh from a friend's yard where they use no chemicals. Their, their home backs up on a reservoir and they have acreage, you know, and they use no chemicals whatsoever on their lawn. Um, and they have glorious plantain uh, patches. So I go and I harvest fresh plantain and then I um, bring it home, wash and dry every single leaf. And then it's chopped up and infused with olive oil. Um, this, gosh, I don't even have the have the ingredients on it. But I mean, the ingredients are olive oil, plantain, and vitamin E oil as a preservative. Um, herbal salve for itches, burns, rashes, and stings. So anything that itches, burns, or stings, as long as it's not broken flesh, you don't want to put this on open wounds. You don't want to put anything on open wounds except, you know, soap and water, clean it out, protect it. Um, but this stuff, uh, I don't know that anybody's allergic to plantain. Plantain is one of the best herbs out there. In the summertime, you, you would recognize it. Um, the, the First Nations called it white man's footsteps because it grew where the wagons had gone. And even now, it will grow like in the middle of parking lots coming up through pavement where the soil is like really poor and gravelly. You'll find plantain growing. It just grows vigorously in places that are extremely unfriendly to other things. Um, and if you take, uh, well, I'll give you an example. We were over at this friend's house where I harvest this from. And uh, my husband had gotten some poison ivy on his ankle. And it was not only itching, but it was extremely painful. I've never had poison ivy. I just, I don't react to it. Thank God. So um, he was complaining and saying, you know, it was really bothering him and really painful. And we're sitting out there and I looked down at my feet and I saw all this plantain. So I pulled up a bunch of leaves and um, kind of busted them up a little bit. And I said to him, just rub that on there until the leaves break up. So he did. And about, I don't know, five minutes later, he said, wow, that really worked. It really took the pain down and the itching has stopped. And I'm like, great. So I think it was maybe half an hour or an hour later. And I said, you know, you might want to do that again. Just And he said, no, I don't need to. It still doesn't hurt. So um, plantain, I've also had experiences with burns, um, putting this plantain salve on and just instantly the burn goes away. Um the other salve here I call Skin Salvation. It's a combination of um, plantain, calendula, and comfrey. So we've got organic olive oil, organic here too. I buy organic herbs. Organic olive oil, plantain, calendula, comfrey, um, vitamin E oil as a preservative. So um, this, I'm going to turn this around just so it looks nicer. Um, I had gotten some of the boo-boo goo from the person I knew and gave it to my sister because my niece had eczema when she was little and she would just get these terrible itchy patches on her skin. And so I got her this and it worked a treat as usual. And I was up there, um, God, this was like 25 years ago and had just been through like one of the most stressful periods of my life. And I had an outbreak of shingles 
and not knowing what shingles was. I just knew, and I was up in Michigan at the time um, at my sister's, and I had this these patches on my butt and down my leg that felt like I was steam burned. You know, when you get kind of a steam burn and you can't see anything, but the skin is just like, woo, hypersensitive. That's what it felt like. And then started getting red and started getting bumpy. And the one on my butt cheek in particular blistered up and was, you know, full blown. So I called uh, my doctor's office back at home and said, what do I do? And they said, yep, sounds like shingles. We can call you in a, a cream that's over a hundred dollars and 25 years ago. Ain't couldn't do that. So my mom said, well, I've got hydrocortisone cream, put it on. It did absolutely fucking nothing, like nothing, no relief, no relief from pain, no relief from itching. And so that you know, shingles is chickenpox virus. When you have chickenpox, that virus, which is a herpes virus, stays in your system forever. And what shingles is, um, is the outbreak of that virus when your immune system can no longer suppress it. So uh, having an autoimmune condition, being under a lot of stress, my immune system, when it kicks up, attacks me. So my immune system dropped, the shingles broke out. The thing that really pissed me off in retrospect was the fact that the doctor's office did not inform me that shingles was the chickenpox virus and that I was then contagious for chickenpox. So I got in the tub with my one-year-old and my five-year-old niece and gave them both chickenpox. Piss me off. Anyway, um... I said to my sister, do you still have that boo-boo goo? You know, this hydrocortisone is doing nothing. I was in misery. She found it. I put it on and immediately, and I do mean immediately, the pain stopped, the itching stopped. It was incredible. And so it gave a protective layer over what was happening until everything, you know, settled down and dried up. And um, it was really a lifesaver. So this skin salvation is excellent for anything that itches, burns, stings, and that's one of the things I make. Um, I usually sell these for 10 and these for 20. This will last you a hell of a long time because look at, you know, there's, there's a, um, I believe this is two ounces. God, I can't believe I don't have that on there. At any rate, um, this is two ounces. This is one ounce. I remember now. And, um, you know, you put your finger in there, you're only taking a tiny bit off the top, you know, unless you're covering a huge area. So it's going to last you a long, long time. So that's one of the things I make. Um, and now I get to the, the big things that I make because I, I sew. I am a seamstress. And um, here, and I've shown you when I, when I get out my Hanson Roberts deck, um, how I keep them in a bag like this. I have been making these since 1989. So 40 years? No, 30 years. I've been making these for 31 years. And the first one that I got um, was at a, a job that I worked at. They had a Christmas bazaar and uh, somebody was selling them. And they were like... Um, very cheap fabric, you know, shiny, but cheap. And, you know, I thought it was cool, but it, it was, you know, definitely just sort of thrown together. So when I started making them, I, I immediately thought, how can I upgrade these and make them better? And it has taken, you know, 30 years for me to get them to this place where um, they're made of brocade, satin and brocade. And I have batting in them. So there's a couple layers of batting, so they're nice and cushy and squishy. And then they have jewelry as well. This was the latest edition, uh, putting a tassel on the bottom with a bead uh, to make it look dressed up, you know, the brocade. They just seemed like they were underdressed without it. And then I put um, beads on the pulls as well. But you can see there's um, there's this area in the middle, and then there's all these pockets, and one of the things that I do with mine is I keep my Hanson Roberts deck in here and I have crystals in each of the pockets and different crystals, you know, things that, that are um, the vibes I want to be in my deck and quartz crystals to clear the deck and smoky quartz to clear energies and stuff like that. So, um, so that's one of the things you can do with it. I love the dark against the white. 
And then here's the same fabric. Look at that brocade, same fabric with black. And I adore that as well. And see the beads on there are these beautiful, dark, like hematite looking things. Um, and there's the black tassel. So I love, love, love making these. So another thing you could do with them, if you do essential oils, and I want to put a little warning out here as well, a little PSA, because um, I shared something on Facebook today about essential oils, that there are people um, that are poisoning themselves and their children with essential oils. And the first thing I want to say is just because something is good in one form doesn't mean that way more of that thing is better, okay? If you have an herb that has a good medicinal property and you're working with that in the plant form and it gives you benefit, when you make an essential oil out of that, you are making an extremely concentrated form of the active ingredient in that herb, the essential oils that are in that herb. And that is no longer a natural product because that concentration does not occur naturally. So when people talk about, you know, even if it's organically derived essential oils, um, when you're talking about an essential oil, you're no longer talking about a product that occurs in nature. You're talking about an extremely concentrated version of something that occurs in nature. And um, I mean, how many times have we been through this? I'm trying to think of an example right now of uh, things where, you know, in small amounts, something is safe, but then we go berserk and take highly concentrated forms of it. I mean, I guess, um, I guess pot is one of those things. When you look at, you know, the way things used to be and the way they are now in these highly concentrated forms and um, people, you know, becoming ill from it. Uh, alcohol would be another thing. Just, you know, more is not necessarily better. And I mean, those are probably really bad examples. My brain's empty. It's mercury retro. What the fuck? Okay. So, um, so one of the things you could use this for is your essential oils. If you do those and here's my little card, this is all synthetic materials. You can hand wash this and air dry it. If you try to do it in a machine, um, you might lose some beads. I do put a little dot of glue on these knots to, to keep the beads from un undoing because the rat tail is satin. Rat tail is very slippery. And even if I put really tight knots here, um, those little knots can sometimes undo. So like I said, I put a little dot of glue on them to hold them. But if you were to put this in a machine, you might lose your beads. And then you'd hear them rattling around and have to put them back on. And you wouldn't be able to because this end would be frayed. So anyway, um, so you could put your essential oils in here, maybe people that do, you know, polarity therapy. And I mean, I can't stress this enough, the concentration of essential oils, you all, I would say you almost never want to ingest them internally. Um, and you also need to be extremely careful about what you put on your skin in that kind of concentrated form. And, you know, for instance, if one was to make a salve with essential oils, you would be talking about putting several drops in a big batch. That's how concentrated it is. And things like um, lemon oil or orange or anything that's citrus based um, can cause photosensitivity. If you put it on your skin, you can actually become allergic to the sun. Sunlight can cause an allergic reaction in your skin. Um, when I was doing henna, um, and I, you know, I will be doing it again, but initially I was I was taught to mix the henna with lemon juice because the acid would cause the dye molecule to bind with your skin and whatnot. And I noticed that when I was doing a henna pattern on myself, the henna pattern would actually be raised. Once the henna came off, I would have sort of a raised pattern. And I remember asking somebody about it and saying, is that just because my skin is absorbing dye and me, you know, and she thought maybe yes. What I found out is that I am sensitive to citrus. And I also hennaed my hair at the time. Um, and when I would leave that henna on my head overnight, which is what I did to cover my gray, um, my scalp would just be on fire the next day and extremely sensitive for several days. So I finally put two and two together and figured out that I am allergic um, to citrus oil. 
on my skin. So what I do now, if I'm doing henna, is I will mix with water and citric acid so you get the acidity that does what you want it to do, but not the oil. The oil is what is toxic. So you could put essential oils in there. Um, even if you're not using cards, you could just put your crystals in there. Um, you could uh, put sewing stuff. I've, I've had people use them as a sewing kit. Um, initially, oh, I hear a woodpecker out there. They're drumming. They're drumming. Spring is coming. Um, yeah, we watch the birds. We feed the birds and watch the birds in our woods. And there have been lots and lots of mating dances going on, especially with the woodpeckers. It seems like we've got a big woodpecker population this year. Okay, so um, just moving the tags off to the side. So you can put your crystals in there. Um, originally, these were marketed as just jewelry travel bags. So like if I'm traveling, um, what do you do with your jewelry? If you lump it all in a bag together, especially if you've got necklaces and the chains get all tangled, well, a pocket can have... Each can have a necklace so they don't get all bunged up and and tangled. And you can put your bracelets and your, you know, bigger things in the center. Maybe a few necklaces, a few sets of earrings, just to keep things separate. Um, another thing, when I originally found the pattern and bought one, is they said uh, use it for um, pantyhose, which, you know, does anybody wear hose anymore? I stopped wearing them decades ago. They're just torture devices. Um, tights, maybe, you know, to make a fashion statement. But, wow. So, um, but you could take and roll up, you know, pairs of stockings and stick them in there. Possibly. I don't know. They might be a little too big. Um, and I want to show you these two because, one, these are the same outer fabric. But the inner fabric of this one is off-white and this one is white and it makes a huge difference it's kind of like the off-white against the blue this is not translating well on camera at all and this has been um, the hardest thing for me in selling these and why I don't have them on I do have an Etsy shop but they're impossible to photograph they're just impossible to photograph this is probably the video camera is getting closer than a still camera gets um, but the just the difference between the white and the off-white, it makes the outer color completely different. It is not translating on camera at all. The other thing I've discovered is that people look at photographs and go, isn't that pretty? But as soon as they hold one, when they pick one up and hold it and feel it, they, they need to have it. So, and it's because they just, they feel lovely, they feel rich, they feel sumptuous. I love to play with them. So... When I'm sewing, anytime I'm making something and crafting something that puts me in right brain, I, I'm in witchy mode. And when I'm sewing in particular, you know, I will pick out the fabrics and start to make them. Um, maybe you can see the color difference a little bit better there with the off-white and the white. Um, but I will sit there and be in trance state. And I am very purpose. So trance state doesn't mean I'm zoned out. Okay. Trance state to me is a highly focused state. It's very, very relaxed, highly focused. It is the state of hypnosis. They're, they're the same thing. Um, but while I'm sewing, I am thinking about the joy that someone will experience when they are holding this. So I am generating joy. I am generating love. I'm generating gratitude because these are great gift items. So a lot of people get them for gifts. Um, and I'm just imagining that, that joy and that gratitude and every single stitch is locking that in. Um, I'll show you a couple little more things about them if I can get it to focus. They're embroidered on the edge. So I do a feather stitch embroidery and then, um, the pockets as well are sewn in with that feather stitch embroidery. Please don't let me dip this in my candle there. That was a nice focus. Come on. Damn it. Okay. So, um, so yeah, you know, everything I make, well, I'm a witch. Everything I make has witchcraft in it. 
Let's put it that way. I'm not a part-time witch. I'm a full-time witch. Everything I do, everything I make, everything I cook, everything I sew has witchcraft in it. But that's not to say that it's always intentional because sometimes, and this is to, to, to tell you as well, that you need to be really mindful of what's going on in your head. Like when you're cooking food for people, if you're pissed off about something, you're going to be putting that in your food if you're a witch. Um, okay. One of my other favorites, and I'm taking tags off of these because they were from an event that is no longer uh, pertinent or valid. Okay. So look at this gorgeous brocade. Oh my God. And a silver. The color is not translating. This is interesting. It's coming out a much brighter blue when I'm comparing the screen to what I'm holding in my hands. It's really a much deeper blue and the gold is more pronounced. That's a little more accurate. A little more accurate. Hmm. Okay. Silver inside, black cord. Um, aren't they? I mean, there's a reason I've been making these for 30 years. They're so satisfying. And with 30 years of skill, I mean, when I started college at 31 years old, I went into costume design pretty quickly um, because I've always been a sewer. And then I also as quickly discovered that I don't care about clothes that much. So, um, but, you know, sewing has always been a thing that I love and picking out these fabrics and just putting together. But anyway, the point of that was that I bring a lot of experience and skill in sewing and I can knock one of these out pretty quickly because I got a hell of a lot of skill and I've been making, I mean, I have made hundreds of these hundreds. Um, let's look at a pink one. I'm going to take the tags off. So let me know when you're watching this. I mean, I see that I've got like zero people watching this live stream. Um, but, you know, what the fuck ever. It's going to be a video pretty soon. Um, I know the middle of a Wednesday is probably not the best time to do a live stream and expect people to show up. But, uh, all right, hold on a second here. Okay, just, just making sure that my chat is active. I'm going to refresh it. Yeah, it's active. Ain't nobody here. That's okay. Okay, so here's a pink one. But anyway, let me know uh, when you watch this video in the comments if you are, would be interested in a live stream sales event. I would certainly discount my products on that event. And um, And, you know, the truth of the matter is because of my disorders. I have about the energy of a third of a person on a good day. And I do not have the energy, the physical, mental wherewithal to run an Etsy shop and run this and run that and all these platforms. And, you know, same thing. I, I know that my channel is never going to be viral. I'm never going to have hundreds of thousands of subscribers. And I have gotten to the place of I don't give a shit. I'm happy that I have the people that do stick their hand up and subscribe to me. I'm, I'm happy to have my small audience and know that they're dedicated to me. Um, but I don't have the energy to set, like set up an Etsy shop and photograph. These are extremely difficult to photograph and then upload photographs and pay those fees and all this stuff. And when I did have an active Etsy shop, it seemed that I never sold anything through that shop. I was constantly pulling things down because I would be going to a, a festival or something and I'd have to pull the items down because I sold them at the festival. So, um, you know, I don't have the energy for that. So I've been thinking about how can I more directly um, make my products available to the people who give a shit and the, the live stream might be the way that I go. Um, I've also watched a crafter named Yvonne Williams, and she's amazing. She's amazingly talented, diverse, incredibly generous with her knowledge. And here's how I do this and her craft along things. And I watch her just because I love her energy. She's very, she's a little sprite. She's amazing. And I will, I'm going to link her down below as well. Um, hold on. Where's my first page? There it is. 
Mountain Rose, Vaughn Williams. Um, but she does these live auctions that are amazing. And I mean, it just, it blows my mind the effort that comes out of this woman. And I imagine that she is like on it probably, you know, 18 hours a day, um, if not more, either crafting or live streaming or doing videos or craft alongs, creating events. She's just amazing. So I'm kind of taking a page out of her book, but I don't want to do an auction. I don't, I don't have the infrastructure. I don't have the support here of people watching the chat while I'm doing this and that. Um, so I just thought maybe a live stream event where I show you things and you say, yes, I'm interested in that particular thing. And then I send you a PayPal invoice and ship and we're done, you know, easy, easy peasy. So here's, we got one, got a pink tassel. Nice focus camera. Yay. Good boy. <laughs> Or girl, I don't know. I anthropomorphize my shit all the time. Okay, so there's the pink and off-white, and then we've got, um, this is the last brocade that I have. So, you know, the main thing of this is I need to clear out this stock. I want to start sewing again, and um, I haven't done an event in a while because of the difficulty of this past year, um, actually past five years, uh, while I was dealing with the passing of both of my parents and caring for them. And I just, you know, life took a turn that I couldn't focus on this. But now I've got things that have been in stock for a while, and I just need to clear. I need to clear out. Look at this brocade. Isn't that fucking gorgeous? I might even do a live stream where I show you, like, all the fabrics I've got in my drawer, and you can order something. Um, here's... Um, Sorry, I don't want you to see my phone number. <laughs> Here's the gold inside. And, and you know, I went through phases of doing like lots of different color satins on the inside and doing contrasting threads with the, with the um, embroidery. And then I thought, I know, I just kind of went to, they seem richer to me when I stay with neutrals on the inside. So I do white, off-white, silver, um, gold and black are pretty much the inside fabrics that I use now. And then I go with white or black cording and, you know, match the beads and match the thread. So, and you know, the, when I started doing the embroidery, the reason I started doing it was because I hate floppy seams. I am, I am a perfectionist and I like things to be top quality. And this pleases me to no end when you've got a nice, sharp, finished seam like that. So, yeah. Toot my own horn. Toot, toot, toot. Now, here are three that the color combos might look a little familiar to some of you. Um, there's one missing because it's the only one that sold. Whenever I've done sets like this, it seems like one sells faster than another. Hold on, I'm trying to get a tag off here. Um, so what do you what do you reckon? Do you reckon? Oh fuck! Do you recognize these? So here we have Gryffindor, and this is not brocade on the outside, just satin. And when I first started making them, it was just like this, plain satin. There is contrasting thread, which does look really nice. So I won't say that I never do that. Um, but yeah, I mean, look how nice that is. Look at that feather stitch. I love feather stitch embroidery. I also just got the word that a dear, dear friend of mine, holy shit, is... Um, giving me like a Husqvarna like top end embroidery machine and I'm just I'm so grateful and I'm so just wow holy shit you know so it's programmable and so that means that I might be like stitching embroidering sigils into things give me your ideas I'm getting very excited about it um, so here's the Gryffindor. Uh-oh, and see, I'm missing a bead. So I'm going to set that one aside because that needs to be fixed. Probably did these before I was putting drops of glue. Um, but, you know, easily fixable. 
These are not as expensive as the brocades because, and this is the true Ravenclaw colors. I get so pissed off with um, Ravenclaw blue and silver or blue and gray like they did in the movies. No, no, there's already silver with Slytherin. Blue and bronze are the actual colors of Ravenclaw. And look how nice that is. And let me tell you how difficult it is to find copper colored or bronze colored satin. Holy shit. So there's the Ravenclaw and then here's the Slytherin. There's the Slytherin. Nice, huh? I love the green and silver. And this green, wow, that green is showing up very blue. So just like that one uh, dark blue brocade skewed much brighter blue than the, the almost navy that it was, um, this is a much more Kelly green color. It's skewing into sort of a teal, which I'm not that crazy about. Um, well, not crazy about it as far as Slytherin goes. I, I do like the color teal a lot. Okay. So there's those. I'm going to like pitch the, well, I just have a pile. <laughs> Shove everything to the side. So um, now I will show you some other things. And I want to get, um, I'm going to grab a deck. Hold on a second. So here's a Rider weight because I want to show you um, what sizes these are. Now, these were made kind of from scrap. And so the, some of them are, the sizes are a little inconsistent or different. Um, but this will fit, as you see, a standard Tarot deck in the box. So it's going to fit it without the box even better. Um, and these are just brocade and satin. So we've got, look at the dragonflies with a, an off-white inside. We've got this gorgeous pink. This is, a, I think, going to be a little narrow for a full deck in the box. Let's try to see without the box what it would be. Um, oh, I've got this taped shut because um, when I was taking these to craft shows and festivals and you know, Harry Potter fests and stuff. Um, I would put this Rider weight deck out to show the size of the bag, and I kept it taped shut so nobody could cop any of my cards. Um, but yeah, without the box, it fits fine. I'm gonna shake it down in there a little bit. Mm -mm -mm -mm. What's going on here? Oh, hold up. Hold up. Okay. So yeah. That, you know, that fits a standard Rider weight size Tarot deck with no problem. Well, the one problem was that I had a business card down in there and it got crunched. <laughs> so, <sighs> so anyway, there's that with a, with gold on the inside. We've got this gold on gold. Look how pretty. Ew. God, I love fabric. Red and black with a thread. <laughs> and little tassels, like I tasseled the ends here. I, I was putting beads on these, and it was just too much. These don't need jewelry like the big ones do. So here's a pink and white. Here's a little smaller size, so something like that um, Tarot of the Ages that's a squattier deck would fit into this and look at that bronze ooh butterfly bronze yes okay those let me find some more brocades here blue and like a dark rose that is reflected in this blue and these are, um, these are both the same. Dragony with silver on the inside. 
So turquoise and silver. All right, let me get this shit out of the way. I am going to keep the cards available so that uh, we can size things when I get to the silks. Silks. Okay. Um, and now we're getting to the silks. So several years ago, um, I have a friend who um, does like art and craft events at the Starwood Festival. Starwood um, is in Southern Ohio um, at a place called Wisteria, and it's like the oldest pagan festival maybe in the world, certainly in the U.S., modern-day U.S. And um, she posted a thing about receiving these used saris, that she bought a lot of used saris, and just shot this picture of these heaps and heaps and heaps of silk. And I flipped out. Oh my God, where did you get that? What are you going to do with it? She makes shrines and things. Um, and I, she gave me her source generously and I, um, bought a lot of these used saris. And I don't mean like a lot as in a bunch. I bought a lot of used saris. They are sold in lots. And what I got was, um, I, you could request uh, what colors you wanted. If you wanted, you know, colors that were, um, where did my piece of paper go? That I was writing shit down on. Um, and I requested like jewel tones. Um, if I can find it, I'll send you a link to those silks. And I got 39 half saris. Now, when they say used, they really mean used. It's not used in U.S. terms, which is I wore it a few times and then I got sick of it and I'm sending it to the thrift store. This is used as in I've gotten every bit of use out of this that I possibly can and now I'm handing it along to be recycled. And so they're, they're, um, a lot of them were in really rough shape. And what I got was 39 half saris which is like 17 feet of fabric that is at least four feet wide. Um, and I thought, you know, what am I going to do with these? So the first thing to do is I have to go through and see um, all their hurts because some of them have holes in them. You can see where a woman has been wearing it and tending a fire in a home and there's little, you know, burn holes in it. Um, and so I, I go through... And I look at what needs to be repaired. And if there are big holes, I can um, do some, some work with some uh, fusible interfacing and patch those holes. Uh, but what I do is I look for places in the saris that are, that are not hurt. And I initially will make scarves so, for instance, um, there, it, w w you know, when you see a woman wearing a sari and there's a part that like comes up over the shoulder and down, and usually that end has like this beautiful four foot section, three, four foot section of embroidery and embellishment, and it's absolutely gorgeous. And that's called the palu end. So I will go to the palu end first and see, um, and you know what, I'm going to move my freaking candle because I am known to do things. Um, let's get this out of the way, too. So here is the palu end of a sari. And if there is enough fabric um, to, enough, you know, good fabric to make a square, then I will make a scarf out of this that is... Um, well, I'll read you my little thing that I wrote on this. These silks are made from recycled saris. They are made from the palu, the ornate end of the sari that drapes over the shoulder. They make excellent scarves, altar cloths, or wraps for sacred or magical items. You may notice some little patches where their hurts have been healed. Thank you for giving them a second life. May they add beauty to yours. And they're dry clean only. Um, so, but look at that. I mean, look at the glorious color. And again, color weirdness. This is a really deep striking emerald green and it's just bluing out on this camera very strange 
The pink is translating as pinker, not bluer. Weird. This is coming over kind of true. It's a little darker in real life. But the green is the thing I'm disappointed in. Really, what I'm looking at, this green is, is green green. It is emerald Kelly grass green. It's beautiful. So there's the Palu, and you've got that, you know, ornate border, and then you've got these little embroidery things. So there's a scarf, and I mean they're big. They're like big, you know, four feet square. Um, there's one. Here's one. Look at this. Look at this. So here's the, uh, here's the border. There's the border. No, that's not the border. This whole thing is the border of the Palu end. There's the border. This one has a little bit of fringe on it. Look how cool. Look at the gorgeous, gorgeous pattern in this. And it goes and it goes and it goes. And then you get to the sari, which is this color. It has a border on it like this, but the, the rest of the sari is this green. Again, showing up a little bit bluer um, and a little bit lighter on camera. But um, so you've got this really gorgeous pinky thing. But imagine the sari was that color with this hanging down the back. Again, like four foot square. Look at this. So, you know, the work with these is just finding the ones that are in good shape. And then, um, and here's one that's been patched. So from the back side, you can see there's a little patch. From the front side, it is all but invisible. And you can see right through it. Okay, let me move these. So from the front side, yes, all but invisible. Um, this one has little little things glued to it. It's got like little beads, almost like little cabochons. Come on, focus. Hard to focus on glitzy things. There we go. And then these little kind of glass beady looking things. Um, imagine an altar cloth. Imagine these as altar cloths, you know, just beautiful. And they're big enough to be you know, to cover a good size altar, four by four. Um, and just as an accent cloth, you know, if you've got a bigger altar and you need to um, cover it, and then this can be the accent cloth on top. So there's that one. Um, there's this one. So what I do after healing their hurts is then I have to... Um, stitch a hem and take a look at this. Come on, pop in there. Do me a solid. Maybe if I stop moving. Come on. Pop. There. Oh, fuck it. <laughs> uh, um, so I will have to do uh, at least two sides. in this, um, there we go, in this eighth inch turned hem, which also takes some skill. I use a special foot to do it, but holy shit, does it take some fiddly work. So here's the, um, this is stamp printed. The end of this one has these really cool little tassels on it. Um, let me try to, there. So really cool little tassels. And again, these are all 100% silk. So, and you know, maybe you know, maybe you don't, there is um, a thing with uh, people that do tarot that you should not uh, store your decks in synthetic material, that a uh, deck should be wrapped in natural fiber in order to protect it and keep its energies pure. And so the two that are most often mentioned are silk and cotton. Um, wool, linen, those are also natural fibers. Um, this one is pretty spectacularly bright and glorious. So, you know, I mean, the, the, the variety 
is astonishing. And out of the 39 um, half saris, look at the look at the gold border. Um, so a lot of these take a lot of steam pressing. This one took a lot of pressing to get this pressed out. It was kind of all wrinkled up. And boy, you can sure tell the use that these things have gone through when I get them. Um, I also put them in my dryer uh, with dry cleaning stuff. So, you know, silk is is iffy cleaning wise. Um, sometimes you can wash it and it's fine. Sometimes you wash it and it completely changes the texture of the fabric. So I just do the dry clean thing and it, it resets them for me. Um, so anyway, keeping your decks in natural fibers. Um, this one is just gorgeous. This is the color of the whole sari here. And then you've got this glorious palu. This was probably a wedding sari. Uh, red is the color for Indian weddings. And look at that embroidery. Now this one has a lot of patching on it. And I don't know, I think this might be one that I actually keep for myself. You can see um, a little bit of a patch there. You can certainly see them from the, the backside more. Uh, but, you know, it's funny when I'm doing this, I mean, look at this tiny little patch. When I'm doing this, I take the saris, there's several patches there, and I will go to the window and hold up the palu at the window to see where the tiny, tiny little holes are so that I can fix them. Um, look at the border on this. Look at that. Embroidered gold threaded border. Um, yeah just fucking gorgeous um okay. and this one is going to make you go ooh ah look at that this one is absolutely plain and absolutely hole free and we've got i mean this end you're starting to get a hint of that purple again but this is the um the end of it and just look at the color it's so beautiful those two colors together I mean wow that one um this this is actually a long cloth I don't know why I've got this whole thing together just to show you you know different this one was such a bitch when I sewed some things because of these little puckery parts trying to hem that is just a bitch um here's another Here's some smaller. So these I would sell just as uh, wraps for tarot decks. And what price do I have on that? 10 bucks for a 100% silk wrap for your tarot. This is um, another sort of long piece. So again, I'm just looking at the saris and taking what's useful and, you know, what's, what's usable and not beyond salvaging and just making shit out of them but one of the most fun things I make are these um, when these women get these saris and they're new they will sew in a cotton panel that's like sometimes five six feet long and I assume that that panel is on the part of the sari that wraps around the waist because it's going to be that's going to take a lot of wear and tear and you're going to sweat which can help you know which can break down fabric so i found when i got these saris that each one of them had this panel of cotton hand stitched in you can see the little hand whip stitches and so i take that panel and i cut it out with the stitches intact and then i make it into these little bags now, the sizes vary because sometimes the panels are wide, sometimes they're not. But they do kind of, that one's a little small for a standard size deck. That one's certainly large enough for a standard size deck. Um, but I, I love the fact that the original stitching that was put into it in India is still there. So India, I mean, everybody thinks of India as this... Um, 
what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of just the birthplace, you know, the navel of the world as far as some uh, re religious practices go and spirituality and yoga and Hinduism and Buddhism. And, you know, it was the birthplace of these incredible spiritual traditions that are so far beyond our Western spiritual traditions, you know, in so many ways. And so when you think about, you know, people talk about going to India and it's always this idea of pilgrimage. I'm going there to find myself spiritually. So you think about the air of India as almost being like this rarefied, um, sacred air. And I think about these women and their practices and the stitching that they put in to bind the cotton. Here you can see that stitching. To bind the cotton to the silk. And what you have then is a cotton lined silk bag to put your tarot decks in. How awesome is that? There's the the lining. That's a gorgeous sari too with that border. This one's wacky. This one's got like a 60s, 70s vibe to it with the green in there. Another one of those, another one, bigger one of these uh, because of uh, the, you know, what I do is I measure how long that cotton panel is and then um, try to evenly divvy it up into sizes that are actually workable for tarot. And I mean, you don't even have to use these for tarot. You could put crystals in these too, because putting crystals in natural fibers is going to do the same thing. You know, it's the same principle as why you would put a deck in natural fibers to protect your crystals. Um, you could put your uh, your sacred jewelry in it. If you have jewelry that, you know, carries vibration that you charge for purposes, you could keep your jewelry in here. There's that wacky, really super bright. And you see these are really long. Um, so gosh, Cariel Viscani would fit in there probably if it's wide enough. I don't know. There's this, this one with this really beautiful dark stuff. And then uh, that one that I showed you, there's that and, and red. To be perfectly honest, I have given away far more of these than I've sold. Um, I make them, they don't take me very long. And then, you know, people come over and it's like, oh, I have a gift for you, especially people, you know, um, that come over. I've done readings for some other readers and it's like here, you know, or they'll look at my stuff and they'll buy things and I'll throw one of these in um, as a little added extra. So, oopsie, what's going on here? Darling, my knot came out. All right, I'm going to knot this one. Like I said, those, uh, this rayon, it's actually rayon satin rat tail is so slippery. So I might have to go back and glue some of those knots. So... Anyhow, that's what I got going on. And I'm going to start, I'm, I'm also working on some things. Um, I like brandy. And as a nightcap, uh, I have, you know, a little cup of brandy. I've done a couple videos where I'm having my little cup of brandy. Um, but the bottles for this brandy are really beautiful this E&J XO Brandy. So I am working on uh, some moon bottles that will have um, purposes on them, etched in them, like Eclipse or Full or New. So if you're interested, if you do things like take seawater or just take pure water and put it out under the full moon to charge it, um, these are bottles that you can keep that in that will look lovely. So I'm working on that. I'm also working on some Porta Pagans, um, little portable altars. And from Yvonne Williams, I learned how to make these dragon eyes that are just fucking fabulous. So I'm working on those as well. And like I said, I've got this embroidery machine that's going to be um, living in my house that I'm going to um, look at translating those sigils into embroidery and possibly having bags with those sigils on them so you can put items in that you would like to charge with particular energies. Um, I'm also going to be editing today a video about uh, making your own laundry detergent 
because ages ago I gave up on that really expensive, super smelly shit that doesn't last very long and is just not worth the money. Um, you can make laundry detergent so cheaply, so, so cheaply. So I'm going to edit that video and get that up there today. Um, you know, that's the other thing I'm never going to be able to do is keep up with the YouTube algorithms that say you've got to have a video up every day, content every day in order to get launched into the stratosphere. And that's just not going to happen. You know, I, I have to be realistic with myself because of my Pluto Mercury conjunction. Um, I get really intense about things. And when I get ideas, I want to make them big ideas. I go to extremes and I get very enthusiastic. You know, I'm a Leo, I'm passionate and I'm like, yeah, I want to do this. And when I was young, I used to be able to just roll through anything I wanted. You know, I could, I can push myself past my limits like nobody's business. Um, but I can't do that anymore. You know, it's reality check going into the last section of my life into my cronehood and realizing that I'm never going to be putting up video content every day. I'm never going to be, um, you know, going berserk cross platforms to, to have content here, there, and everywhere. And not without help anyway. So, um, so yeah, just, you know, looking at things that I can do and trying to scale it to what I can keep up with and, um, what I can do successfully because I've been through uh, that wheel too many times of having an idea, pushing myself so hard and then crashing and I have to let go. And the, I can't, I can't do that to myself anymore. It's been a hard, hard lesson and it is not, doesn't come naturally to me at all, but I am learning how to do things like one little step at a time. So anyhow, um, thanks for hanging out with me, even though nobody hung out with me that I could see. At least nobody was chatting. I don't know if anybody was here on this live stream. But now it's not going to be a live stream anymore. It's just going to be a video and an hour and 16 minute video, 17 minutes. So damn, wow. Any road, um, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. I also want to do some on-camera crafting and creating because it is kind of fun to just hang out you know I do feel the presence of you I don't feel like I'm talking to myself which is interesting so um look for more of that as I'm now recovering from Hogwarts and not in like full crash mode anymore uh but you can count on the content every Monday and Friday, the Tarot and Oracle reviews. So, you know, that's the one thing I've committed to because I can do those. I can, I can record a batch of them and get content uploaded so that I know that you're receiving on a consistent basis, even when I can't be producing on a consistent basis. So anyway, like, subscribe, let me know what your thoughts are on a live stream sales event, and I will be seeing you soon. This is the Zen Witch 